Welcome to chapter one of Senkatsen Education. In this chapter, we're gonna be setting the foundation of understanding CAD. We're gonna start with the building blocks of how to draw, the history of it, and we're gonna be building out an actual part that you can order. So in this chapter, we're gonna be building out this washer with keys in it. Throughout the chapter, we're gonna be learning new tools, new theories on how to design this. To start with lesson one, we're gonna go over the history of CAD. So let's get into it. So we're starting with the history. And before you say it, I get it. History is not for everybody. I definitely fell asleep in my fair share of classes growing up. But some people, like my producer Dom, got some minor in college in history and she loves it, so we're doing it. Actually, all jokes aside, history is gonna be important for us in this chapter. To understand CAD, so computer-aided design, is gonna be the same building blocks that CAD was developed over time. So lines, circles at the very beginning of time to advancements in efficiency and stuff is gonna be the, exactly the same thing that we're gonna be learning as we're introducing ourselves to CAD and mastering it. So let's jump over here to the whiteboard and kind of go over what was before, right? So before CAD is sticks and dirt, right? We built things like the pyramids, or we like to think we did. There's a lot of you know, ideas around that. But I do know that we built airplanes, cars, before computers and CAD existed. So with pen and paper, there was a lot of issues with it. First of all, revisions were a nightmare. If you messed up, you're starting all over again. There was tons of tools that were required and it also included blueprint machines if you wanted to make multiple copies. Well, in the 1960s, the main dude, Ivan Sutherland, came up with a way that the computers can copy what you're doing using a light pen. And this is what we like to think of as the birth of a CAD. This is the first time that we have a computer kind of doing a revision of our drawings. Now, it didn't have a lot of the fancy dimensions or anything, just kind of copying us. In 1982, AutoCAD came out. And now this is the first time that you could not have a government contract and still have access to some kind of CAD feature. And that reigned for about eight years. That kind of leads us into the 1990s. Now new players came into the game, players that are still around today, like SolidWorks, ProE, Katia. Those new players led to advancements in new features in that same software and that same idea. Those new features were DFM, so design for manufacturing, parametric design. Now we're gonna talk about parametric furthermore in these chapters, but it's the idea that the drawings manipulate with your changes to them. It kind of self-draws itself, uh, self-draws. So let's go recap. Why is this all actually important? Well, at the very beginning, we had the basic building blocks of just sketching on a pen and paper. And that's exactly how we're gonna end up structuring this chapter one. We're gonna start with the basic idea of putting your idea onto a sketch in CAD. So that's it for this history lesson. And the next lesson, we're gonna start with talking about 2D and 3D, and we're gonna dive into why 2D is the most important thing to learn first. We'll see you on the next one.